This is Sheila Warren, also known as the Killer Clown. Sheila earned this nickname back in 1990 when she was a part of a murder investigation where the killer dressed up as a clown and took the life of Marlene Warren. Sheila was never charged with the murder, but 27 years later, DNA evidence led police back to her. Joey was at home with his mom and his pals on May 26, 1990, when a clown appeared at the front door with flowers and balloons and a pistol. Marlene was shot in the lip and she died a few days later at the hospital. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office found this white Chrysler LeBaron at a nearby Winn-Dixie. This was believed to be the killer's getaway car. Physical evidence inside the car was collected. Now in the early phases of the investigation, detectives homed in on Sheila Keen. She was an employee of the victim's husband and she was having an affair with him. They had motive, but they didn't have enough to bring charges. Not until 2017, when investigators say new technology and new science allowed them to connect the dots after receiving a grant to re-examine old cold cases. In the 90s and in 2017, at the time of her arrest, Sheila Keene said she was not the clown, and she maintains her innocence. The police believe that Sheila was the killer because she had motive. Sheila had been having an affair with Marlene's husband, Michael, and after she was killed, Sheila would marry her husband. Unfortunately for the police, motive wasn't enough, and it wasn't until 2017 that they finally had enough evidence against her to charge her with first-degree murder. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. You'll stand up, ma'am. She was searched before she was put in my vehicle, but if you'd like to search her again, ma'am, I'll stand okay. by here with you. You got anything on the floor? Mm -mm. Anything, man, of coffee. No, I'm good. Do you want any water or anything? No. Okay. We're going to start the recorder, okay? Detective McCann, ID4975. Today's date is uh, September 26, 2017. The time is approximately 6.05 p.m. This interview is being conducted at the Washington County Sheriff's Office, present with Sheila Warren. Um, what's your date of her? Eight six six eight three. Okay. So I'm Detective McCann. I work for the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Okay. Um, I'm here to talk to you about a, a case from several years ago. Okay. Um, you're in custody, so I want to go ahead and, and read you your rights. Um, if you don't understand, you just let me know, and I'll explain it to you. Just sign that. Just say no. So do, do you go by Sh uh, Sheila or Debbie? Nice. Both, okay. Um, is, is, did you ever get your name legally changed to Debbie? No, you just go by both. Okay. Is Debbie your middle name? It's or? A nickname. Oh, nickname. Okay. Um, and are you currently living in the place in Virginia here? No. Do you live in, in Tennessee? In Tennessee. Okay. And you just have two places? Mm -hmm. That place is beautiful over here. It's a beautiful place. Um, and then you guys own a restaurant together still, or did you sell that? I mean, I don't know. I don't really, I mean, these questions you're asking me. I'm just trying to get a, a background. Yeah. That's all. I'm just trying to get a background uh, of what's been kind of going on in your life um, and what's kind of, what's been going on. Um, yeah, I mean, I really don't want to talk to you. Okay. Do you want to know what you're charged with? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, you're charged with the first degree murder, okay, of Marlene Warren. Um, so that's what you're, you were indicted in Palm Beach County, and so that's, that's the actual charge. So I came here to try and, and, I don't think that the detectives back then, I didn't work the case when initially back in 1990. I just kind of, I'm a cold case detective, and I just kind of pick it up, and then I kind of go through all, you know, what, what they did back in 1990. So I was able to review the statements, um, review the police reports and, and whatever documents that they collected back then. Mm -hmm. um, and so, in doing so, you know, I don't think that they really gave you an opportunity to tell your side of the story or any of an accurate amount of information. I think they kind of rushed through your interview and I don't think that they gave you an opportunity. So, I traveled up here to um, a have you charged, obviously, with, with the, the first degree murder after the indictment, but also to give you an opportunity to um, to try and explain some things away, or to um, explain exactly more detail of what happened that day. Um, I, mean, I know you had 
went and looked in that some cars that day to repo. Um, I mean, you you really didn't have an airtight, according to the reports that I read, an airtight alibi, whereas Michael had an airtight alibi. Back in 1990, when the murder took place, the police believed the victim's husband had been involved because he had been having an affair with Sheila. The police were able to confirm that Michael had a rock-solid alibi, so he was ruled out as the shooter. When they asked Sheila where she had been, she claimed that she had been searching for cars to repossess, but she was unable to give her exact location. The police also learned that a woman fitting her description was spotted buying a clown costume as well as balloons and flowers. When they found the getaway car, they found brown hair that visually matched Sheila's. Despite the evidence, Palm Beach County did not believe they had enough to charge her with murder, so the case would grow cold. Sheila and Michael would eventually marry and begin running a burger restaurant together. Fast forward to 2017, the police were able to gather enough evidence against Sheila that she would be charged with first degree murder. Um, so I was trying to, wanted to just answer, have, see if you'd answer some questions that really weren't ever answered back then. Because you know right now, Michael is, Michael's free. Michael's not arrested. He hasn't been charged and he's not going to be indicted for the murder. That you are the one who is left here yeah, well, to hold, to I be in trouble. You know, to, I didn't do it, so that's the end of the story. I'm not talking to you. Okay, so you don't want to talk, you don't want to give your side of the story as to what happened. Okay. Um, I'll give you my, leave you my business card. And if for some reason you change your mind and you want to talk, just give me a call. I'll be here for a couple of days. Okay? Yeah, go ahead and stay here. I'll uh, circle my number here for you. Let me fit you, uh, actually. I'll put myself up in here. Do you have any questions for me? Okay. So there's my cell phone right, number right there, okay? So you go ahead and just sit right here. I'm seeing Detective Hazelwood from the Washington County Sheriff's Office, okay? And my purpose is just to have a chat with you for a minute. I'm going to explain to you the process of what's here and happen, okay? That's it. I'm not asking you anything or anything like that, okay? We have a warrant out of Florida, which is Palm, okay? Like concerning what uh, Paige was discussing with you, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm swearing out a fugitive warrant, okay? Uh, here shortly, we'll go before the magistrate, okay? And then uh, you'll go through a bond hearing, okay? But uh, more than likely, there will you'll have to go before the judge, and they will extradite you back to Florida, okay? That'll be the proceedings that we're going through right now, okay? As far as anything, do you have any questions about that procedure or anything like that? Anything that you need or anything, okay? But here shortly, I will once that paperwork is is done, mm -hmm. I will give you a copy of it, okay? okay? All right and then it'll have your information and things like that. But if you have any questions or anything like that, you just feel free to ask me, okay? Because we'll be taking it right here in a little while, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, want any water? Anything? Anything to drink? You good? Yes. Okay. I want to talk to my husband. <laughs> okay, you want to talk to your husband? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I will let them know that, okay? Thank you. All right. Anyway? Yeah. You asked me to check on the status of your husband. You wanted to talk to him, right? Yes, sir. And my understanding, I wasn't inquired about that. And my understanding, he just went home. Okay. So That's it. Can I call him? You will be able to when you get to the jail. Okay. You, you'll you have your phone calls up there. But my understanding, he went home. Okay. Okay? Thank Need you. anything else? Yeah, thank you. All right, then. When Sheila was arrested in 1990 and in 2017, she can be seen smiling in both of her mugshots. Even during her interview with the detective, she can be seen smiling as if what is happening is just a big joke. Unfortunately for her, it isn't a joke, and she was charged with murder. Anyway? Yeah. Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Are you ready? All right. What do you prefer me to call you? So I'm do it correctly. It doesn't matter. My nickname's Sheila. All right. Debbie, Sheila. I don't care. Okay. Miss okay. Warren. Whatever you want to do. Front or back. I will put them on the front. How's that? That's wonderful. Oh, is that wonderful? Yeah. That makes you day, makes it better, right? Yeah. Okay. We're gonna 
go up to the regional jail and process you, okay? Okay. All right. Is that all right with you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Raise them up for me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lock them so they don't get tight and hurt you. Okay? Alright. Okay, need bathroom, anything, or we can make it when we get there? To... Okay, alright then. Sheila would spend five years in jail while she waited for her case to go to trial. During this time, she continued to claim innocence and the prosecution realized that they would have a battle ahead of them in court. While they prepared for her trial, Sheila would suddenly withdraw her not guilty plea. Her lawyer had worked a deal with the prosecution. In exchange for her guilty plea, her first degree murder charge would be reduced to second degree murder instead and she would receive only 12 years in prison. Due to the state's sentencing guidelines and the fact that she has already served some time, Sheila's release date is set for some time in 2025. This trial was supposed to start in just a couple of weeks after numerous delays, most of which centered around key pieces of evidence. But now there's no need for that trial anymore. Sheila Keen Warren pleading guilty to a single charge of second degree murder. Keen Warren stood before the judge this afternoon to formally enter that plea. The case had grown cold by the time the lead detective took it over in 2013 and found a fiber among the crime scene evidence that prosecutors say linked Keen Warren to the murder. Investigative reporter Terry Parker has been covering this case for years. She was inside the courtroom during that plea. She joins me now live with the very latest. Terry. Tiffany, Sheila Keen Warren has just pleaded guilty to a crime that she has always maintained she did not commit. But her lawyer tells me that it's a big win for his client. He reminds us that she originally faced the death penalty. And now he says Keen Warren will be getting out after six long years in as little as 16 months. After almost six years in jail, accused of being Wellington's killer clown, Sheila Keen Warren changed her plea from not guilty to guilty. Do you realize after you leave the room today, you can't come back in here and withdraw this plea? Yes. For years, Keen Warren's lawyers vigorously filed motions poking possible holes in the state's case, claiming evidence was contaminated, other possible suspects, including an inmate who allegedly confessed, were ignored, and witnesses to the murder all described the clown as a man. Her lawyer says he thinks it worked. So we're thrilled with the resolution. Um, we are beyond happy for our client. And I, you know, I want to reiterate that Miss Keen Warren's innocent. Prosecutors always maintain Keen Warren is the real killer, but two weeks before trial suddenly offered her 12 years instead of the life sentence she was facing. At the plea hearing, prosecutors outlined their evidence. A clown wig fiber found in Keen Warren's apartment and in the clown getaway car. Witnesses who would testify she was the one who bought a clown costume and makeup days before the murder. And others who would say Keen Warren was having an affair with the victim's husband. And despite the reasonable doubt the defense was able to dig up, Greg Rosenfeld said Keen Warren did not want to gamble with being convicted and sentenced to life. I think, you know, ultimately the state recognized the weaknesses in their case. I think they wanted their conviction. And our client wanted to go home. I'd love to read your thoughts on this case. Do you think that Sheila pled guilty just to get it over with? Or is she really the clown killer?